You're listening to an Air Books podcast. Welcome to Parenting and Bonding with Children's Books. Each Tuesday in our Facebook community, we go live to chat with the children's book author about the magic of books. Each book and author was chosen with you and your children in mind. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's Author Spotlight. Okay, hey, hey, everybody, and thank you for joining us on the Parenting and Bonding with Children's Books podcast. My name is Quinn. I'm the creator and the host. And on this podcast, we talk to the authors who create the magic behind the books. Our message and mission are simple. We believe that books are magical and they strengthen the bonds between parent and child. So tonight on this podcast, we're joined with author Katie Reed. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So happy that you're with us tonight. I see your books behind you framed. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. We have some copies here and I was telling everybody before we started um, just to get them a little excited. We're actually going to be doing our first giveaway on the podcast tonight. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. I'm so excited. We've never done a giveaway before and Katie's books are awesome. We actually have um, two of her books, some fun stickers and pins. Um, That's awesome. So we'll do it randomly. So if you guys are here, just drop a hashtag live or say hello. Let us know you're here. And if you watch afterward, just give us a hashtag replay and let us know you watch. And there'll be two winners tonight. So make sure, you know, you let us know that you're here. So let me tell you all, well, a little bit about Katie. So Katie Reed, she's worked in after school programs for most of her career. And she's also worked in reading intervention programs, which is something that I want to hear all about. Um, She currently has two books out and a third one coming in March. And tonight we'll discuss her Wizard and the Lizard series. Um, So, Katie, tell us a little more about yourself. Yeah. So, um, to you know, to start, I grew up a pretty nerdy kid. I grew up reading Harry Potter, Twilight. Uh, Lord of the Rings was a little hard for me as a kid, but the movies I watched over and over and over again. Um, but I, you know, read the books when I was older. Um, so then when I, uh, I got my first job, I got it. I actually got a job at the same after school program I went to as a kid. Cause I was, you know, when you get a job as a teenager, you want to do something you like. And I had weekends off. And so it was a great, you know, pick and it's, it was crazy. You know, I started in the kindergarten room and the kindergartners are all over, but I really, loved reading to the kindergartners it Mm -hmm. it's always been a dream of mine to write books but then you know it's intimidating as you know a high school kid you don't really know what you want to do but then my passion for writing really hit when I was in the after school program and I would read to the kids and you know sometimes the kids would think it was boring and I would be like hmm how can I spice this up so I uh, I would put their names in the book and they'd be like me and I'm like "Uh uh-huh and they're like oh I'm that character I gotta pay attention now I'm I'm that character I gotta see what happens and it's like usually I'd look for kids and who are kind of paying attention I'd say their name and then all the kids kind of sit up and you know they want to they want to be in the story too yeah so then I was really you know but then they would remember the stories or they'd want to read their favorite book again and it's like I got them to engage with reading just kind of by simply making them feel like a part of the story Mm-hmm. So as the years went on, I stayed through this job all through college. And then when I graduated college, I ran my own program, which comes with a lot of heavier stuff. But my favorite thing to do in after school programs was read to the kids. Yeah. Um, in the summer, we would do a reading program. And I would always pick a book that had like a movie or something they would the kids would be excited about like holes or, you know, and we'd read it and I would really try to teach them like it's so rewarding to read the book first like I know it's easy to just go and watch the movie but let's read the book first and like yeah. we would compare the book to the movie and all that like most of the time the kids would be like I like the book better and it's like you know they, they like got that appreciation and I think it's really fun to do that and um so I would do that with them and then you know I would I would read with them but then I started making up my own stories and putting their names in it 
because all these books I was reading, I got all these ideas in my head for stories and, you know, things. And so I would just improvise stories. Like I would get an idea, like a mystery or something in my head and I'd put the kids in it and they'd engage in it. And then I'd be like, someone help me. What happens next? And they would chime in and help me with the story and they become the storytellers as well. And, you know, they, they teach you that, you know, you teach the kids a lot in the after school programs, but I sometimes feel like I learn more from them. And that's such a gift to me. Yeah. Because a lot like my wizard and the lizard books, they're, you know, from, from kids at work who, I mean, we can get more into my books, but the message of self-acceptance, I've had so many kids say to me, I wish my art project looked like so-and-so's, or I wish I could play dodgeball like so-and-so. I had a kid straight up tell me that he didn't like himself. And Mm -hmm. I would sit with that kid and I would say, you know what? I don't like when you talk about my friend that way because I really like you. Mm -hmm. And here's why. And sometimes this kid's behavior could be difficult, but I didn't see him as his behavior. I saw him as who he was. And I would always try to pull out his strengths and I would try to lift him up. And it's like after a bad day at school, I would always say, listen, you're at the after school program now. You get to reset. Like we get a fresh start. And I really like who you are and you really shine here. And so I would always try to lift kids up and get them to like themselves. And so that's kind of where my first book's message really came from is from a lot of these kids telling me, I wish I was skinny like her. And I'd be like, no, you're so beautiful. You know, you, you, there's, you know, I could go on and on. I have so many stories, but that's, that's really what I got out of my after school program. And then after that, I kind of wanted to change a pace. And then I worked in the reading intervention. I loved it because this is where kids sometimes don't like to read because they, they have a hard time with it. So it's like, once you kind of teach them and make the connections with sounds and phonics and all the things that they need to connect. It's like, oh, reading can be fun. And then it's like, let's find stories that they like to read and get them interested in it. You know, Mm -hmm. it it was, it was amazing to do that program. And I worked with someone that I absolutely love. We're a great team. And it was, it was, it was a really good time. And then I got pregnant with my son. And then after I had him, I kind of stayed at home with him. But my father-in-law was like, you need to, you need to get writing on your books. You know, I know you want to do it. I know you need to do it. I know, (laughs) but the newborn life, I only get two hours of sleep. Right. (laughs) So he was really encouraging me. And then, uh, before I, I had two major losses in my family, right around the time I had my son, I lost a family member, both very unexpected one, three weeks before I had my son and one six weeks after. Oh, and wow. so I was dealing with a lot of grief, a lot of, you know, I was sleep deprived. I have this newborn that I need to kind of stay strong for. And uh, writing is my outlet. I love to write. I love storytelling. And so it was really good therapy. And the wizard and the lizard actually came to me at three in the morning <laughs> while feeding my son completely yeah. sleep deprived. And I was like, boom, it's like it hit me. It's like a wizard a silly wizard who teaches lessons. And I'm like, who could he teach lessons to? Who can he have that's a sidekick that he can teach lessons to? And I was like, I want a rhyming book. So lizard came to mind right away. And I'm like, okay, I could see this team happening. Yeah. And then um, and then I was like, what would he need to help a lizard with? And then I was like, dragon, lizard, okay. Like, so it all just kind of came together and I got my phone out and I put in my notes at three in the morning and I just started writing and writing and That's kind of how my series was born. Wow. Okay. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, I know. It's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, my my brain went off um, when you first started talking about the reading intervention program, um, because I love that you would insert their names into the story in order to engage them, because that's one of the tricks that I give parents all the time. If they find that their kid is just not listening, put them in the story because the world is all about them, right? It revolves yeah. around them. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as you put them into the story, it's like you have their attention almost immediately. Right. Um, and I love who you are, who you are in general, but who you are for these kids at school, how oh. you encourage them and just keep them going. I, you know, kids always remember that one teacher or that one person later in life who really just worked with them and encouraged them and 
it's sad that it, it can be hard to find that person in school or in the after school program. So, you know, for all the parents, thank you for being that person. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, no, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So three o'clock in the morning, you're feeding your baby and <laughs> the story just comes to you. And um, it, for anybody who's on that hasn't read the book yet, um, it's they both rhyme the wizard and the lyric wizard and the lizard and then wacky weather the second one right right um, the first story is the first story buddy the lizard buddy is his name correct yeah buddy buddy the just there it is yep and what's that I noticed I spotted something on the cover you won an award for these books yeah I was one of the first place winners in the royal dragonfly awards for the picture book uh six and older category so that that's was a- awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I really love your books. And Aiden read them. You, I love to read aloud to Aiden. I mean, he reads independently as well. But I had all the plans in the world to get these books home and read them to him. You know, so we're running errands. The books are in a backseat in a box with him. And he opens up the box and he just starts reading the books. And I'm like, no, what is the read about? <laughs> cracking up in the backseat. <laughs> talking about how silly Buddy is. Why would Buddy do that? Why would he, why does he want that? And <laughs> <laughs> he ripped through both books like so quickly. Um, and then I actually had the chance to read them myself. And I love that they rhyme. I love the characters. Buddy is, anybody can relate to Buddy, yeah. right? In both books, the yeah. message, his journey to self-acceptance and it kind of reminded me of like adults and I don't want to go to, but like plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, what flaws do I have? How can I be better at anything? Like it, it literally yeah. can be so many things that someone just feels like they, you know, can be better at or look better, or, you know? Yeah. I was in this group, um, it's like this children's book group where parents look for books for kids. And it was this mom who was struggling because she had a daughter who was like very, she was really hairy Mm -hmm. and she was having a hard time dealing with that. And I thought about like your book and the message on like self-acceptance and, you know, it was a long thread, but I recommended it. And (laughs) yeah, you know, it's just, you think about all these different situations that our kids deal with. Um, and your book is, is just great for that. Um, can you tell us a bit about the second book, Wacky Weather? Yeah, absolutely. So Wacky Weather, I'll just show the cover of that one, Wacky Weather. Um, that one is more about things we can't change. Mm -hmm. Um, there's lots in life. I think that everybody experiences loss at some point, everybody experiences something that they can't control. And so in Wacky Weather, you know, I'll try not to give it all away, but Buddy and, you know, Wizard have a picnic planned and the weather's terrible. And so they're like, how can we fix this? So they build a weather machine, they try and things go wrong. (laughs) Um, And kind of after things go wrong and the sun just won't come out, they kind of take it down and, you know, they go down and they go, you know what? We can't control everything. And, you know, that's okay. And Mm -hmm you know, and then something wonderful happens. And I didn't ever want the message to be to just quit. It's, and this book came out actually kind of when COVID was really scary. And I didn't intend for that. I, I, I had it being illustrated in January, but then when all of this sort of started to happen, I was like, oh my gosh, the message is sort of, I hope this can help kids with COVID because it's like, we didn't know, you know, we had no idea back in April what was going to happen, what, mm-hmm. how this is going to work itself out. But yeah. I just wanted to give kids that hope that, you know what, the sun will come out and it will be okay. And right now it's scary, but, and we can't control it, but it's probably going to turn out okay. And, you know, I lost my mom at 15 and that's kind of where this stemmed from. I, yeah. it was, it was sudden. She went in for a regular procedure and came out with a death sentence and dead four months later uh, with cancer that had just spread. Yeah. And she just had no idea. It was hard. Um, But, you know, as a teenager with so many feelings and emotions and my dad is wonderful. I'm, I'm so blessed to have a wonderful, wonderful father who really stepped up to the plate and 
Oh, I love my dad so much. He's <laughs> one of my favorite people. Hi, yeah. dad. Um, but he, you know, I, I, I had to make my dad proud. I had to choose my mindset with this thing that I couldn't control. Yeah. And I had to say things will get better. And I'm going to try to focus on the direction of making it better. I'm going to get a job that I like with the after school, you know, after school, I'm going to do well in school. I want to try to get good grades. I want to make my mom proud. And it's like, I had to choose that mindset. Like I could be angry. I could be sad, but I chose to really have the sun come out. I, I really, you know, I, I, I wanted that mindset of, I can't change this but I can change, you know, what's to come and, and to make my mom proud. So that's sort of where wacky weather stem from is like, I know that's super deep yeah. and for kids met, you know, kids book, the message can't be as deep as that, but it's more of the sun will come out. Things will get better. Um, so that's kind of where wacky, the message of wacky weather, at least. Yeah. I mean, that was deep, but life happens. And I think that I hope that wasn't, everybody is going through life and everybody is experiencing different things. And I think that's one of the things when we talk about using books as tools, you know, a book doesn't have to be really heavy in order for the message to, to hit a child at their level. And that's one of the things that is so awesome and amazing about children's books is that they're not, you know, a lot of times very deep, but it's what the child needs to hear. And when we can't find words as teachers and as parents, when we're talking to our children, books can give us that. I feel like I, you know, I, I say that all the time and I, <laughs> no, but it's true. you know, you, you took it there because it books give us the words that we need, you know, in order t- for our children to understand and be able to deal with different emotions. Um, and everybody goes through something different. So yeah. like this book could be, you know, divorce is something a kid can't control. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's lots of things kids can relate besides death to that. You know, yeah. there's, there's lots of things that kids just can't change situations. Lots of times adults are in charge and kids have to go along with what their parents are, you know, moving away to another state. Like, yeah. you know, just how you kind of your outlook and, you know, just, I was hoping it can hit kids in all different ways and sort of, you know, I can't control this, but it'll be okay. You're so right. And you just put something in my mind because I haven't yet. So my son, his best friend moved away, like right when COVID was like in the mix mm-hmm. and, you know, all the kids thought they were going back to school. So like, he's dealing with that emotion. Like I'm not going back to school and not only that, but my best friend moved away, you know? Um, yeah. I can totally use your book as a tool for that situation as well, because it comes up. I mean, they could be in the middle of virtual school and somebody will say something and he'll say, do you know him? Did you know him? And I'm like, Oh man, he's still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's so hard on hard. kids. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, so I can definitely see your book being used as a tool in so many different situations. So, Buddy the Lizard, he's so cute. C- can you tell us about your illustrator? How did you find your illustrator? Oh, my gosh, I love my illustrator. <laughs> um, so, I found my illustrator through my husband. Okay. Uh, she is a friend of a friend. And my husband was programming a game because he's a software developer. And he was just doing this on his own time. And he asked his friend, Hey, like, do you know any artists? And he's like, yeah, I do. And, uh, he told us about Jenna. And so she was working with my husband originally on one of his projects. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote this manuscript for wizard and the lizard. And my husband was like, Oh my gosh, we have to actually do this. You know, cause I, I had other manuscripts. I wrote other books, but I never felt confident enough to sort of take the plunge. Like I knew it wasn't my best quality. Didn't stop me from trying. Didn't stop me from writing but I never put any of my other kind of manuscripts out there because I just, so, but then my husband was like, this is it. You did it. Like, we're going to, we're going to make this happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's like, talk to Jenna, this, you know, this is someone I'm working with. And so I got an art style and within an hour, she came up with my characters basically exactly how I envisioned them. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Jenna is one of my favorite people in the whole world. If you're watching Jenna, <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi, Jenna. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> she has made my dream of writing books come true. And the thing is, it's like, yeah. these aren't, th- these aren't my books. They're our books. They're our project. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. You know, I've never actually met Jenna in person, uh, but we talk all the time. Uh, 
you know, we message all the time and I feel like I know her. Oh, look and at the comments. Just, it's Jenna. Jenna. Oh, Jenna. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Jenna. <laughs> That's cool. Sorry. It came through right then. I'm like, oh, that's Jenna. Oh, no, that's perfect. <laughs> no, I'm glad she's uh, watching. I, I just, I appreciate you a lot, Jenna. She, you know, every time I message her, lots of times I send these like really long messages and I'm like, oh, there I go rambling about. And she'll just respond. She'll just, she'll be like, I got it, you know? And she, you know, if I have a vision of something and lots of times I make these sort of mock books that she, you know, of what I envision with my words. And okay. I tell her, I was like, listen, you have creative freedom. Like if you think a page can be better, please, please yeah. do it. Please tell me. Mm -hmm. I trust you. You're the artist. But it's like every time she sends me images, I just get chills because it's like more than I could ever hope for in my illustrations. And it's yeah. like, I'm so connected to this person that I've never even met in person. And it's just, it's so cool how, you know, through technology and through mutual, I don't know, like, you can have such a wonderful connection with someone. So Jenna's the best. And I just, I'm so excited. She's still making books with me. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jenna. We love, we love your work. The books are, you know, amazing. The illustrations really bring the words to life. You know, it's awesome when you, when you, I love a good rhyming book. I mean, who doesn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> love a good yeah. rhyming book, but the illustrations as well, just make the book, they come together and just make the book something amazing. So if you guys haven't checked the books out, um, I put the link to Jenna's books. I'll show you where to find her. We're still going, but I feel like we're at that place. I just want to put her information up here so you can find um, Katie online. She's on Instagram. You can also find her on Facebook. Um, what's the best place to find you like are you always on IG always on Facebook oh well, I check I check everything like if if okay. you know I check everything so any one of those is good uh Facebook I'm usually on and I mean I'm on everything so okay however <laughs> will be same here I'll leave that up there for a little bit so we talked a little bit about how you wanted parents to uh use your books what did you envision like I don't even know how to ask this. What did you want to be the take the major takeaway from your books? How did you want parents to use them in their homes? So I definitely like when I saw your group, that's mm -hmm. exactly how I wanted parents to use my books. Yeah, uh, I wanted them to be able to teach kids lessons through. So my books, I, I their humor, like I like to put humor in it because mm -hmm. when I was in the after school programs and I read to the kids a lot, if it was just kind of a mm, like, I don't want to say boring because that sounds so rude. I love all children's books. It's just, if it doesn't grab, if something doesn't grab their attention, lots yeah. of times they drift off. And lots of times that's why I'd put their names in it. But then it's like the books that they thought were funny, you know, like I could think of a few that just, I know this is a winner by yeah. humor. I really wanted to incorporate humor because it gets their attention. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a way you can write a serious, you can, you can get a serious message through, but when you, you know, the humor gets their attention for it first, right? Like they're mm -hmm. like, Oh, this is funny. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, because they're invested because it's, they've been paying attention. It's funny. They're mm -hmm. like, Oh, I, I get that message at the end. Like it, you know, and, and my first one was self, self acceptance. It's like, you know, this was all funny. We went through this funny thing, but then, you know, buddy likes who he is at the end of it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. But <laughs> I mean, I, I think we know that that's sort of, yeah. Like, but you know, another thing about my first book is Jenna even asked me this when she was illustrating it, she goes, so was wizard trying to make buddy realize he's perfectly perfect by getting the potions wrong and having crazy mm. things happen. Okay. Or is he a silly wizard that just, God has put God his stuff mixed up. And I go, you know what? Like, I want the reader to interpret that however they want. Because I thought about it as the writer too. I was like, you know, is he kind of a goofy wizard that threw in the wrong stuff in the potion to make it go wrong? Or was well, he being sneaky and he's trying to teach him a lesson through it? I just kind of let the reader decide how they want to interpret that and tell them that's the answer. It's whatever you interpret. So when parents are reading it, I hope the kids think about that. Is the wizard doing it on purpose? Is he just kind of silly? You yeah. know, that's kind of a question that I've got. I've actually had kids ask me at readings that I've done at schools. Mm -hmm. and tell them the same answer. It's up to you. 
but so that question kind of goes through their head, but, and then they're, they're laughing. Cause when the things go wrong, the kids think it's funny, but then at the end they're like, Oh, you know, I, the message is very clear at the end that, you know, buddy's perfectly perfect just the way he is. Yeah. So, and like with wacky weather, I want, you know, there's humor in it. Things go wrong. It's kind of a pattern, but, uh, you know, at the end, I hope the parents say, you know, did you see how the sun came out? Like they tried and they, but they couldn't control it. And Mm -hmm. do you see how, you know, things, things can be okay. Sometimes when we think they won't be, you know, so that's kind of the, that's what I hope people get from it. So that's what I hope people get from it. Thank you. And I'll tell you as a reader, um, I saw the wizard as a guide. Like that was like my immediate thought, like, okay, he's a guy, he's trying to get Buddy, the main character somewhere. I don't know if that comes from reading so many children's books, <laughs> but yeah. that, that's how I took, you know, the wizard um, and definitely hilarious. I mean, I was telling you earlier how Aiden was just in the backseat, just cracking up <laughs> while he was reading it. So, so that's really good. Well, okay, and so, you know, oh, sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, for a ki- as a kid, uh, Gandalf was really sort of the main inspiration. Gandalf and Dumbledore. I love Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, and when my mom passed away, you know, Gandalf has a lot of really wise sayings and, and quotes in the movie about death mm-hmm. and dying mm-hmm. and things we can't control. Yeah. Like you, you have to do what, you know. And uh, so the wizard, I wanted to be someone safe, someone who... I don't know who can help guide kids. So I did want that. I did. That's kind of where I was coming from. I know I make him silly or Gandalf's a little more serious. Dumbledore's a little more serious, but Mm -hmm. I wanted him to, I wanted kids to feel safe with the wizard. And, you know, I don't know. I just always felt safe. Like I just felt so much better with Gandalf's lessons and his words of wisdom. And I know these are kids books. So I hope it's an equivalent, a good equivalent for kids, you know, to have that person with words of wisdom. No, I see what you're saying there. And I think it's good when kids can find books, find characters in books, especially this is a series that's going to continue, um, you know, that they can relate to and find a guide in because they'll be, they'll grow up with that, with that guide and remember them later in life, just like you did, you know, (laughs) and modeled the, modeled the character in your book after so um, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else on your heart to share about your books? Um, well, I do have another one coming out. Okay. Um, it's that. coming out in a couple weeks. It's called Wizard and the Lizard, The Magic of Marvelous Manners. This is the cover. Okay. New characters in it. Um, it has a little bit of change of pace. There's There's still some humor in it, but this one is actually more of like that tool that you are using because... My kids, if any of my kids watch this, they will tell you from work. If any of my kids from work tell you, I go off on manners, hold the door, please and thank you, you know, be kind to people, treat people with respect and Mm -hmm. you'll get it back. And uh, this book is really dedicated to all my kids who've listened to me say that, but it's like, you know, getting kids excited about using manners is, is so big because, you know, they just learn to be really good people like just a please or a thank you makes an interaction so much better right and really kind of teaching kids that I think is so important or like holding the door I remember there's this kid I was walking to this piece of place years ago Mm -hmm. this kid saw me coming with his mom and he goes oh hang on mom and he opens the door for me and I was like mom is doing it right this (laughs) this kid has really good manners and I was Mm -hmm. just you know and I just think starting early is so important with teaching them you know, just common, nice things to say to people like, please, thank you. Excuse me. I'm I'm sorry. So I hope the kids really like this one, even though it's a little bit of a change of pace from my other two. Yeah. I I think it'll still be, I don't know. I hope kids like it still. No, I believe they will. And it's needed. You know, one of the, the most common requests that I get when I curate lists for parents is they want a book that teaches their child manners. Most of the books that I have in my arsenal to recommend are based in school, but kids need to know that school is not the only place 
<laughs> to use manners absolutely um, to be kind and to be polite so your book that book is very much needed i can't wait for it to come out let yeah. us know is it still march yeah it's uh hopefully the week of march 15th we're gonna get that out so okay yeah well let it, us know yeah absolutely know. <laughs> we're excited so um Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Katie, for coming on to the podcast and sharing your work and a bit of your story with us. We really appreciate that. Um, like we said before, we'll be doing a giveaway. So two lucky people who are watching, um, let us know you're here so that we know we'll be doing this um, randomly. And I'll announce it in the group. Um, I'll go over to the comments and see if anybody has anything. Just give me one second. Oh, so everybody's just saying hello. Your message resonated when you uh, talked about earlier passing stories along and everybody contributing to the story um, when you talked about uh, when you were in school reading to the kids. People are just saying hi. Tristan says, oh, yes, manners is a huge necessity that has to continue to be taught to all children. Um, I'm not sure what her last comment refers to, but... Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Did you have anything else, Katie? Oh, no, just thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. And I hope you guys like the new one that comes out. Yes. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys check out her books. They're available on Amazon um, and also Kindle Unlimited. Yep. Yes, they're on Kindle Unlimited as well if you have a subscription to that. Um, thank you, everybody. Have a great night. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.